Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone to this meeting of the Boston Art Commission. My name is Alexandra Palzotov, and I'm the Public Art Register within the Mayor's Office of Art and Culture. In that capacity, I'm also the Administrator of the Boston Art Commission. Let's just take a moment to update our names and pronouns, as well as make sure that we are all muted. In accordance with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Order suspending the certain provisions of the open meeting law, we are conducting this meeting virtually. As a reminder, this was extended until 2025. To ensure public access to the deliberations of the Boston Art Commission, the public can join this meeting through telephone and through video conferencing. For those of you who are with us today, this meeting is being recorded and closed captioning is available. You can access it at the bottom of your screens. If you're having trouble locating that button, please chat us for assistance. The Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture has a dedicated public art team that facilitates the Boston Art Commission public meetings in managing the phases, operations, and duties related to the public art projects cited or proposed on the public art property in collaboration with the Boston Art Commission, community members, and colleagues at the City of Boston. Helping facilitate this meeting are Amber Torres, Public Art Project Manager, Liza Quinones, Mural Consultant, Sheed, and then Alexander Paul Zoda, Public Art Registrar. The Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture believes that public art is any artwork that can be installed in publicly accessible spaces where they can be experienced by everyone for free. For transparency and community input, projects, artworks proposed on City of Boston property are reviewed and discussed at public meetings of the Boston Art Commission, the BAC, on a regular and usually monthly basis. Working together with a public art team in the Mayor's Office of Art and Culture, the BAC is an independent board composed of two ex officio and seven volunteer community members appointed by the mayor. The BAC has exclusive authority to approve and commission artworks intended to be added to the city's collection or be placed on city property. Welcome everyone. I call this public hearing to order at 4.37 p.m. Today, the commission is holding its monthly public meeting our meetings are generally held on the second Tuesday of every month, this being a special meeting, but we hope you'll continue to join us. We engage in discussions about public art in Boston in order to foster the creation and collection of artworks that reflect the people, ideas, histories, and futures of Boston, which is located on the traditional homeland of the Massachusetts people and the neighboring Wampanoag and Nipmuc peoples. We acknowledge the atrocities committed against indigenous peoples, all of the communities that have been subsequently harmed, and the ways in which colonialism has created systemic oppression. We recognize the continuing presence of these communities and the indigenous peoples represented in the city's residents, in addition to those in the diaspora. We also recognize that Boston exists as a result of the forced labor and economic extraction from enslaved African Americans. I'll now take roll call of the commissioners to confirm a quorum. After I state your name, commissioners, please say here. I begin with Vice Chair Camilo Alvarez. Here. Cara Elliott Ortega. Here. I believe Diana is arriving slightly later. Bob Freeman, I didn't see him. Brian Hone. Here. Nigel Jacob. Here. James Mason. Here. And I don't believe Abigail is here today. We do have a quorum. So on this side, you will see today's agenda, which is also posted publicly on the city's website, boston.gov. We'll now review meeting minutes from the March meeting. Are there any comments or modification any commissioner would like to make? Hearing none. I'm curious if any commissioner would like to make a motion to accept the minutes. I'll make a motion to accept the March 12th minutes. Thanks, Brian. I'll, Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Thanks, Camilo. Um, commissioners, I'll call your name. And if you agree to accept the minutes, please say yes. Camilo? Yes. Cara? Yes. Brian? Yes. Nigel? Yes. James? Yes. And I'm a yes as well, so the motion passes.
I'll now pass to Karen Goodfellow, who will highlight presentations for public review and give her director's report. Thank you, John. Uh, we have 10 presentations for review tonight um, at this special meeting. Um, the first project on the docket this afternoon um, is the Peace Pools Trail, Courage, Justice, and Forgiveness Pools, which are temporary artworks in the final design phase around Fields Corner, Dorchester, by artist Ruth K. Henry, Nora Valdez, Fernand the Lopez. This is uh, raised by the proponent Ruth K. Henry and the Louis D. Brown Peace Institute, whom we've seen before um, on these projects. The second artwork for review is The Future of the Past is Here by Curtis Williams, a long term mural in the acceptance phase for the Faneuil branch of the Boston Public Library in Brighton. And this is raised by the proponent um, Alexander Paul Zotov, um, City of Boston. And then we will start in our Canvas of Culture um, presentations, and all of those will be uh, by Street Theory um, in the city of Boston. The third project is um, a long-term mural, and it will, like all of these, be in the artist selection phase. And this one is for Charlestown High School um, at 240 Medford Street in Charlestown. And as I mentioned, Street Theory for the city of Boston will be presenting this project. The fourth is uh, long-term mural um, in the art selection phase for the Curtis Guild Elementary School in East Boston. And again, this will be street theory for the city of Boston. And then fifth, we have long-term mural in the art selection phase for the Mario Umana Academy in East Boston, and that will also be street theory. The sixth project is going to be a long-term mural at the Phineas Bates Elementary School in Rosendale. And Street Theory will be presenting for the city again. And the seventh project, as part of the Canvas of Culture Initiative, is another long-term mural in the artist selection phase for the Rafael Hernandez K-8 Dual Language School in Roxbury. The eighth project will be uh, a long-term mural at the Lee Academy Pilot School located in Dorchester. And this is going to be presented by Street Theory. Thanks, Karen. Sorry. We'll the, oh, are you sorry. still? Yeah, sorry. The ninth project is going to be the um, Hugh O'Donnell Elementary School in East Boston. And the 10th one is going to be the um, Joyce Kilmer School in West Roxbury um, by Street Theory again. And we're going to skip the director's report. What we do have one update fresh off the presses is that we just got um, the green light from legal to to uh, release our call to artists for on monument, re monument, de monument, transforming Boston. So you will see that soon, uh, very soon. And that is the project we're doing um, with the, the monument project award that we received from the Mellon Foundation. So we're very excited and we'll be sharing that um, with you and publicly very soon. There we go. Thanks so much, Karen. We'll now move on to the items on the agenda for review, public testimony, and commission vote. Here's how you can participate in today's meeting. If you have technical difficulties, you can ask questions in the chat and a member of staff will help you. When public testimony is requested, you can press the raise your hand icon and we will call on you. If you were calling in, press star nine to raise your hand. I'll pass to you, Camilo. Our goal is to make this meeting a good experience for all. Please remember to keep your comments on topic, brief, and respectful, respectful of all. You can submit longer in testimony to BAC at boston.gov. That's B O S T O N dot G O V. If you are called on, please state your name, title, program, and organization if relevant. Thank you, John. The first presentation for a review today is the final design review of a temporary artwork by Ruth K. Henry, Nora Valdez, and Fernanda Lopez in Fields Corner, Dorchester, proposed by Ruth Henry, Louis D. Brown Peace Institute. Public Art Manager Amber Torres will introduce the project. Thank you. Many commissioners might be familiar with the Peace Polls Project. The most recent installments were reviewed and approved by this commission in July of 2023. Ruth now returns with two local artists to propose the Courage, Justice, and Peace polls. 
they had just missed the March BAC deadline when they submitted their application and reached out for help with site approval, but were eager to abstain site approval in order to install the artworks in time for the Mother's Day Walk for Peace. They now have the opportunity to present this project at the special meeting, so I'll pass it over to Ruth. Thank you so much, Amber. I think Rachel's actually going to start us off, but Thank Rachel, you so much. Um, I'm Rachel Rodriguez. I'm one of the co-executive directors from the Peace Institute. Thank you for having us back to talk about this next installment of the Courage, Justice, and Forgiveness polls. Uh, next slide, just to remind folks that the Peace Institute serves as a center of healing, teaching, and learning for families and communities impacted by murder, trauma, grief, and loss. And these seven principles that the artwork is um, formed around are um, part of the foundation of our work. And so I will turn it over to Ruth um, to talk a little more in detail. Thank you. Next slide. Um, I've been the teaching artist in residence at the Lewis D. Brown Peace Institute for two years now um, and have really enjoyed using these seven principles to engage community and public art, um, both indoors and outdoors in our community. Next slide, please. Nora, I think you're on mute. Okay. Hi. Thank you for having us here. And my name is uh, Nora Valdez. I'm being um, doing public art and community engagement project for over 30 years. Uh, I'm originally from Argentina, living in Boston since 86. And I'm being invited by uh, uh, the Peace Institute and Ruth to do the justice poll. Next. Alexis, can we hear you? Something's going on with your audio. I'll take this slide and we can try again for the next one. Um, this is going to be our forgiveness poll artist, Fernanda Lopez. She's currently out of the country, so she couldn't make the meeting, but um, she's a arts therapist and an amazing muralist. Next, please. And these are our uh, reference polls, the first four that we created, which are the, our love poll, um, our unity poll, our uh, faith poll, and our hope poll. The love poll was created by Alexis, who's on our team, but struggling with audio. So Alexis, feel free to hop in whenever your audio starts working and just let us know, and I'll take your slides in the meantime. Next. The Peace Pulse Trails transforms our community response to violence by honoring those we've lost in colorful mixed media installations around street poles. Each installation uplifts one of the seven principles of peace that guide our work at the Peace Institute. So while we celebrate the dreams held and principles embodied by our lost loved ones, it begins with the creation of seven peace pulls along the route for our annual Mother's Day Walk for Peace. Um, our artist cohorts of muralists, educators, art therapists, and survivors design the polls and guide children and families from our survivor network and from our community in creating these together. Next. And the next polls on our, uh, on our trail here are the ones for courage, justice, and forgiveness. And this will complete our pilot with our, our NUFA grant. Um, uh, the Courage Pole features a broken cocoon of metal gears that give way to metal butterflies spiraling upward and into the gears um, are cut participants' responses to the question, what do you want the courage to let go of? And into the butterflies are cut participants' responses to the question, what do you want the courage to call in? The Justice Bowl has a collection of grayscale open hands and fists that give way to a garden of colorful flowers and leaves above balances that hold hearts of loving, uh, loving justice. And then our Forgiveness Pole features a series of wooden hearts with hinge doors that reveal what is possible when we uh, both forgive ourselves and others. Next. So this is the map uh, that we hope we can put in the next three polls, the courage, justice, and forgiveness. Here you can see the location for our next three polls and an idea of what each will look like. Thank you. Good to have you back, Alexis. Um, this is our courage poll rendering. Participants' responses, as I mentioned, are cut um, are cut into connected aluminum gear and butterfly shapes across two panels using a plasma cutter. 
Each one is 78 inches high and 15 inches wide at the bottom, 10 inches wide at the top. The panels are rolled into two connecting semicircles, hinged at one end and connected via padlocks on the other. Next. So this is the justice spots that we just uh, finished. And these are a laser cut, uh, half an inch uh, marine plywood of uh, hands, uh, fist, flowers, leaf, and they are all uh, hinged together. Um, they are all screwed together in a base that is uh, nine, 90 inches uh, tall by and the base five inches and the top four inches. And um, they're all hinged together in hexagonal shape, six uh, shapes that will go around the pole and they are all will be locked with a pallax. And they're all will be ready for the installation. Here, you can see that for the forgiveness pole, people will be decorating hinge hearts to reflect on what helps us open our hearts to forgiveness. Um, this next slide is of our community engagement workshop for the Courage Poll. Next. And this was for the for the justice uh, a workshop poll that many people can diverse. Here are some pictures from our forgiveness poll workshop. And this is a letter of support from the Spot for Life Foundation saying that being in creative space evoked many good feelings because it let others know that our loved ones mattered. So this is a, a letter from the doghouse health health saying that this project not only supports healthy resilient building practice but also builds healthy relationship and connection across our community. Here is a letter from Lower Roxbury Coalition saying they love the idea of this peace polls trail creating a colorful map of possibilities. And next we can um, see our fabrication and installation plans for the per for the courage poll. So first the participants respond to the questions on black and gold scratch paper and create take home reminder pendants. Um, then the participant responses are designed into gear and butterfly files for the plasma. The aluminum panels are cut via plasma, rolled into the semicircles and hinged on one side uh, with rings on padlocks for the other and then wrapped around the pole and secured with padlocks. So in the justice poll, uh... We cut the the marine plywood and the and with laser, so in hand, fist, and flowers, and that's what we give to the participants silhouette for them to respond, and they paint it with acrylic and, and add text and names and all sort of things. And, and so, and after we have uh, those those shapes, it's going to be uh, installed, a, a screw into hexagonal base. Uh, that is also fabricated with uh, marine plywood and is 80 by 5 in the bottom part of the base and 40 inches in the top. Um, so everything is, um, is is hinged together, six faces, and it's going to be lack with a padlock and everything is going to be is, is sealed um, with um, a stereo quote uh, sealer so that the way each shapes and also the, the base. So everything is super protective for the outside. The forgiveness pole is one half marine plywood is laser cut into four by four hearts and two by four half hearts. These are high hinged together as illustrated in previous slides. Participants paint on wooden hearts using acrylics. Painted hearts are sealed and screwed to two by 80 copper strips Strips are drilled plus zip tied to predicular hexagonal copper strips at top. Structure is wrapped around street light and top strip is zip tied tightly around pole. Hexagonal strips are wrapped and zip tied around middle and bottom of pole to secure vertical strips. And then for our de-installation and maintenance plans, um, the installation would go up in April, last for 18 months. Based on the lifespan of similar products, we, projects, we don't anticipate many maintenance needs. That said, the location is just a few blocks from our home site, so we will continue to do monthly checks um, for damage and complete any repairs as needed. 
And for deinstallation, all that will be needed to do is to um, open up the padlocks and remove the zip ties and then remove the standing structures. This is going to be the plaque and signage um, to be fabricated and installed on town field fence once the first seven principles are completed. And it's going to use the same materials and methods as the Cycles of Peace mural, um, which is marine plywood sandwich to um, the fence with screws. And that is our presentation on the Peace Bowls. Well, thank, thank you, you everyone. That. You're yeah. welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> the commission will now have the opportunity to ask any additional questions. After the commissioner question and answers, we may invite the public to make any comments. Uh, commissioners, have any questions? Well, if there are no any questions, uh, can we choose make a vote a motion? Should we have any public? public yeah, let's invite the public, yes. I would just, I don't have um, questions. I would just um, thank the presenters uh, for their presentation um, and for your thoroughness of you know the projects and the thought that's gone into the projects and the continuation of the projects. It's excited to see the series come to back or come back to the commission um, and excited to see these kind of come to life in the city. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And I see a couple of our collaborators, Sarah Silva and William Bishop on here who may want to offer some public comment. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm the Crossroads Youth Coordinator. Um, I'd like to say that um, our Youth Council has participated in a lot of these projects. Um, it'd be really great to see them up because it gives them a sense of pride in their community. Um, and also completes our mission for our organization, which is, which is to beautify the neighborhood. Thank you, Sarah. Who was the other person that had a comment? Go for, go for it, William, please. Hi, my name is William. I'm a part of Sarah Silva's Youth Council and working with the Peace Institute was amazing. It was an amazing experience. Like seeing like my art work a part of like a big like a big like forum and like out in the public for me to see and my friends to see it's just been amazing to see that because it feels like my like opinion is actually shown and like it can actually bring peace and bring like happiness to other people that may feel that same way I felt in the past thank you William thank you for sharing Anyone else want to raise a hand? Well, thank you all for presenting and thank you all for your comments. Uh, would like to any other commissioners like to make a motion? I will. I will make a motion to. I guess. Um, what are we accepting? Final design. Um, of the Peace Pulse project. I'll second. Thank you. John, should we take a quorum? I mean, vote? Yeah, go for it, Camilo. Uh, well, uh, can we get a yes from the commission members? John? Yes. I am a yes as well. Cara? Yes. Brian is a yes. Nigel? Yes. And James? I will be a yes. Great. Thank you. The motion passes. Congrats. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Can you yes, look you all. Made the motion? Sorry. I think we might have missed Brian, Brian, Brian Hone made the motion. Okay. Thank you. So the second presentation for review today 
is the acceptance of a long-term mural entitled The Future of the Path is Here Now by Curtis Williams at the Faneuil branch of the Boston Public Library in Brighton, proposed by the city of Boston. Public Art Registrar Alexander Paul Zoltov will introduce the project. Thank you, Alexander. Paul. Hi, all. Good afternoon. Um, today, we are raising The Future of the Past is Here Now by Curtis Williams for acceptance into the collection. This piece was first commissioned as part of the Transformative Public Art Program. As part of these efforts, we'd like to first extend our gratitude to the artists and our partners from the Boston Public Library, Allison Ford and Priscilla Foley, as well as Amy M Manson Reese, Faneuil Branch Librarian, and Anne Langone, the Children's Librarian. The artwork is installed at the Faneuil Branch in Brighton, which went underwent an extensive renovation, including a new entrance and improved accessibility. As part of that process, the Boston Art Commission, the Mayor's Office of Art and Culture, in collaboration with the Boston Public Library and the Boston Facilities Department, commissioned this new artwork by Curtis Williams for the children's area of the branch. This is a digital mural that has some hand embellishments that the artist came in um, to add on. And as you can see, a lot of people are really enjoying it already. The This is a picture of the artist with our Mayor Wu um, and then some children enjoying the mural. Um, for this digital mural, Curtis wanted people to be able to see and remember things from when times were simpler and to inspire creativity as well as their joy with themes surrounding childhood iconography, dinosaurs, and outer space. In Curtis's own words, this piece to me represents the vast expansion of our imaginations and how we, we set our minds. Anything can be possible. Everything simply starts out as an idea, and the more you work toward it, the more it becomes reality. As part of the artworks um, development. Our team worked with Curtis and our partners at the library on a few engagement sessions with the Brighton community, including an artist talk um, with the stakeholders of the library and, a present and at the Presentation School Foundation Community Center, as well as a drawing workshop at the Oaksware YMCA that took place during spring vacation. Both engagement sessions were well attended. The drawings on the um, the drawings on the are some of the children's artwork that was developed during the workshop with Curtis. And the other image of the little alien was provided by Faneuil's library branch librarian, Amy Mason Rees. The image was created by Jermaine Rao, a Brighton teenager who sadly passed away in 2019. But if you notice, the little alien has been incorporated into the artwork. And here is a little bit more information regarding the printing and installation process, as well as material information for the artwork and any kind of additional information that one might need for any maintenance work. Um, the artwork was printed on a high performance 3M vinyl wrap, which was fabricated and applied by vendors uh, chosen and contracted within the library's construction team. Their interior wall site and overall mural is approximately 18 uh, feet by eight and 11 inches and a half high. A high res file of the artwork has been kept within our, our the city's collection in order to allow for reproduction for purposes of maintenance and repair over time. These maintenance provisions have been made in accordance with the artists and our site partners. Um, so we feel confident that it will be well taken care of over the years for many to enjoy. Thank you, thank you. Um, do any commissioners have any questions? I just had a comment that it's nice to see this project realized now. Um, after we saw its preliminary design, and I particularly like the inclusion of the alien, I think that's a nice touch. And I think many, many people are going to enjoy this um, at the library. So it, it's, I'm really grateful. Yes, there was a line out the door for <laughs> for the opening. It was it was nearly impossible to get in. And um, from what we've heard, there's been a lot of reports of children really enjoying it. Yeah, I was going to say that on, on the day of the opening, it was like just a really lovely thing that um, to see so many people engage with it. Uh, and it was definitely just a, one of the many stops in the library for people to to enjoy. Um, like Paul said, there was a line around the block to get in. Um, so it was a much anticipated reopening, but this was definitely, it's such an important part of the renovation. So really nice to see. That's great. Great to hear. Any other commissioners? Does anybody from the public want to make a 
question, concern, or comment? I'll jump in and just say that I was the project manager for this project, and it was wonderful working with Curtis and, and seeing him work with all of the students and incorporating their ideas. Um, and it's really amazing to see it come alive um, in the space that it was intended for. Thanks, Liza. Well, if we are done with comments and questions and concerns, would any commissioners like to make a motion? Camilo, I move that we accept the future of the past is here now at the Fania Hall branch of the Boston Public Library into the Boston Public Art Collection. Thank you, John. Anyone second that? I'll second that. Thank you, Nigel. So I'll take a vote. Uh, I am a yes. Uh, John? Yes. Kara? Yes. Brian? Yes. Nigel? Yes. James? Oh, uh, yes. But for the record, I unseconded the motion as well. Oh, awesome. So that's like a third. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, congrats. And I think the city of Boston is lucky to have Camilo, this piece. In one the, second. In the... Diana is oh. here now. Oh, Diana. Great. Diana, did you get a chance to see the presentation and everything? Would you like to make a vote? I think I'm going to vote present, just given that I joined after the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Well, congrats to the city of Boston. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to taking care of this piece for many years to come so everyone can enjoy it. Thanks, Paul. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. The next presentations for review will be the artist selection for A Canvas of Culture, BPS Murals. Mural consultant Liza Quinones will introduce the initiative as a whole and discuss the process for each individual site. At the end of each site overview, commissioners can ask questions and the public will have the opportunity to comment before the commissioners vote. I'll pass to you, Liza. Thanks, John. The Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture is thrilled to introduce a new mural initiative that integrates large scale murals and other public art projects at capital improvement sites throughout the city and across Boston's neighborhoods. In its inaugural year, the initiative is concentrating on sites at Boston Public Schools, connecting artists whose artwork aim to amplify the aesthetic, cultural, social, and educational richness of schools while adding vibrancy to our city's landscape. Next slide, please. After several months of strategic planning and partnership with BPS, their operations, facilities, and arts departments, we launched a call for walls last November with the goal of selecting 10 to 12 project sites at schools across the city. We received 16 applications from schools and selected nine projects at eight school sites that fit our eligibility criteria. This year's projects under opportunity one of the call to artists will be cited at schools located in Charlestown, Dorchester, East Boston, Rosendale, Roxbury, and West Roxbury, and installed this summer. For Opportunity 2, our team worked closely with PFD and their capital project at the Carter School in the South End. Uh, this school site will host four projects in 2025, and our artist recommendations for the Carter will be presented during April's BAC meeting. The image to the right is a public art map of existing projects, projects in progress, as well as proposed project sites through 2026. As MOAC continues to broaden the horizon of public art across the city, our goal is to increase public art investments in neighborhoods that so far have um, received some under or have been underinvested in. With a primary focus on expanding the city's collection with high quality, culturally relevant, and community responsive art with the help and the important role of the commission. I'd like to take a moment to introduce some of our project partners from BPS, 
With us today are Jake Lacey, the BPS Assistant Director of Strategic Facilities Initiatives, and Tony Beatrice, BPS's Executive Director of the Arts, who will um, jump in and have a few words to share regarding our partnership. Jake, would you like to go first? Absolutely. Thank you, Liza. Good evening, everyone, members of the commission. Uh, as Liza mentioned, my name is Jake Lacey, uh, and I come to you um, very excitedly on behalf of BPS Facilities Management. Uh, this opportunity is something that you know you'll hear from many people within BPS, but from a management facilities management standpoint, this opportunity is something that we're very excited to offer to once once again our schools and the communities that enjoy those wonderful schools. Um, you'll see many of them on the call as well as we move forward. And the last statement that I would like to mention is just a huge appreciation for Liza for the coordination that we've had thus far on this project. It has been an absolute joy um, to work in step with her and I can't wait to keep on going with this. So thank you. Thanks so much, Jake. I really appreciate that. Um, and Tony, did you wanna jump in and say a couple of words? Sure, I'm just grateful um, to the Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, Boston Arts Commission, um, Jake and everybody at the facilities and operations team on the BPS side. Uh, the superintendent Skipper always says it takes a village. And I think this is a great example of the cross collaboration between the city of Boston and the Boston Public Schools. Uh, we were very lucky to have Karen Goodfellow uh, director of public art for our city of Boston come in and actually speak to our visual arts teachers at our annual professional development day back in January, not only about this opportunity, but just in general, the public art that exists in the city. And it was a great turning point for our teachers to really think about how do we get the students outside of the school building during art class. So that way we can integrate the murals that are out in our communities into the uh, classroom curriculum. So just really grateful for this opportunity and excited uh, to uh, turn our school buildings into public museum uh, pieces of art. So thank you all for this uh, again. Me too, Tony, and thank you so much. I'm so grateful for our partnership together with um, you and Jake and all of BPS. Uh, so what we're looking at now is our program roadmap. Um, as part of our strategic plan, this roadmap was developed and presented to BPS art facilities and all the schools. This roadmap takes us from the launch of the mural initiative with the call for walls at schools last November through our current phase of artist recommendations and selections now, and then, you know, turning the corner, our final corner um, into community and school engagement in the mural installations. We are very excited for a busy spring and summer ahead. Next slide, please. So um, these are some of the results from our call to artists. Um, our team launched a call to artists on February 7th to February 28th. The call to artists closed with a total of 163 artist submissions on our submittable platform. Our artist marketing and outreach efforts extended to several platforms, including MOAC's website, social media accounts, and the arts newsletter distributions. We also posted on Street Theory social media platforms, my email distribution list, and a public art website called CodaWorks. What you see here is a data set of demographic information collected from artist applications. Um, indicating geographic locations, race, age, and disability. We look forward to further analyzing this data to help inform our policies and practices moving forward mm -hmm. to ensure our team's goals for implementing the city's diversity, equity, and inclusion, inclusion standards are being met. This slide here will detail um, both the selection criteria and the process that we went through to get to this place. Our artist selection criteria is comprehensive. We prioritize artists that have a strong connection to Boston and or the overall themes of the individual sites. Um, artists who possess a robust and original artistic vision 
artists whose work samples demonstrate artistic experience and technical ability to execute similar public art projects in scale. Um, artists with plans and experience in engaging their community through public art and those who have a proposal narrative and experience that align with the city's curatorial vision. On the right is a breakdown of our artist selection process. Um, for the first step, I first reviewed all of the applications and divided them into three groups. Those groups were strong consideration, future consideration, and not eligible. The applications were split pretty evenly across those three groups. I then met with each school and presented them with a curated selection of six to nine artist applicants that closely aligned with their goals and themes. Schools were then instructed to re review those full applications and select their top three finalists. Some schools accomplished this by establishing a working group of school and community stakeholders, and others had students, staff, and outside community members vote on their finalists. Then all artist finalists were scored and submittable by members of our MOAC team. And the final artist recommendations being reviewed here today are based on a combination of all these efforts, which include the criteria eligibility, school choice, and our team's curatorial vision for the city's collection. So now for the fun stuff. Um, opportunity one, I will now present you the artist recommendations for each school under this opportunity. Our first site presentation is for review and public testimony. Um, it's a long-term mural at Charlestown High School. This site is an exterior facade at the main entrance of Charlestown High School. Charging. And with us today, I believe is AJ Trivedi, the principal of Charlestown High School. Uh, I'm not sure if Leanna Toller, assistant principal is here as well, um, but please let us know if you are. Charlestown High School is interested in artwork that celebrates its diversity and inclusivity and artistically representing the school's unique learning communities, highlighting themes of unity, support, and the exchange of ideas across cultures and languages. Next slide, please. Together with the school, MOAC represents local Boston artist, Luis Tarforo. These are three examples of his past work created in collaboration with Gio Gofai Ortega and their company, Inspired Through Art. The Charlestown artist selection process included conversations with their art teacher, after school art teacher and leadership staff members representing all of their small learning communities and student populations at CHS. Luis has deep connections to Charlestown High School with family members, sisters, and nieces who graduated and experienced success there. He proposes to create a story of that success and unity while creating a sense of pride that um, it within that mural. He plans to create a mural that represents the student body now while giving a nod to the community that it, it exists in and the values the school represents. The artist finalists for Charlestown High School included Luis Tarforo, Corey Thomas, and Jason Talbot. Well, I can take this one from you. The commission now has the opportunity to ask any additional questions. Any questions or comments from commissioners? I have a question, John. Um, sure. So uh, Liza and the team, is is this wall particularly facing, you know, where the students are either walking by or is this near a recreational area that um, will be visited um, by students in the high school? So this wall is located right at the school's um, main front entrance. Thank you. And um, AJ, who's the principal, might be able to speak more to that as well. Liza, you captured it. This is our main student entrance. Um, all students enter and exit from this uh, Polk Street door every day. Mm 
Thanks, AJ. Any other commissioner comments? Now I'd like to open it up to the public if anyone has a question or comment about this Charleston High School mural. AJ, I don't know if you wanted to say anything else about it. I would, and just a note of uh, uh, really appreciation just to be considered. And uh, the this process has been really exciting for us. The idea of having uh, an outward facing representation of our character and values as an open enrollment school serving the entire city. It's uh, really exciting. There's so much public art within the building and to have something that's uh, outward facing. And there's there's one already. It's very colorful. And this is, uh, this is there's a concept that we may be able to build on that um, uh, on that existing color facing uh, facing the Polk Street. Well, we're grateful for your partnership on this project. Likewise. Any other public comments? Hearing none, I'm curious if a commission member would like to make a motion for artist selection. I'll make a motion to uh, move forward with the artist selection for the Charlestown High School. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Thanks, Diana. Now I'll take roll call. And if you agree with the motion, please say yes. Camilo? Yes. Cara? Yes. Brian? Yes. Nigel? Yes. James? Yes. And Diana? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So the motion passes. Congratulations. Excited to see this um, at Charlton High School once we see the mural soon. And I'll pass it back to you, Liza. Thank you. Um, our next site presentation for review and public testimony is a long-term mural at the Curtis Guild Elementary School in East Boston. This site is an exterior mural at the school's main entrance as well. With us today is Principal Karen McCarthy. Curtis Guild Elementary School is interested in artwork that evokes a warm, welcoming atmosphere, celebrating diversity, vibrant flowers, animals, multilingualism, and the school's core values, kindness, community, creativity, respect, and excellence, affirming each student's heritage and potential. Next slide, please. Together with the school, MOAC recommends artist Israel Guerrero Romero from Tulum, Mexico. These are three examples of his past work. The Curtis Field Artist Selection Group included leadership, staff, and neighbors. They also had their student Gator Council vote on uh, selecting the artist finalists as well. Israel Guerrero Romero is dedicated to showcasing the beauty and resilience of Mexican and Latin American culture through his art. His focus is on promoting diversity, inclusivity, and a deep respect for his heritage, emphasizing the strength required to overcome adversity and attain well being. He is particularly interested in bringing this aesthetic expression to the communities of East Boston, celebrating and uplifting Latin American culture through vibrant colors and the diverse narratives that enrich our collective story. The artist finalists for Curtis Guild Elementary included Israel Guerrero Romero, Matea Fitz, and Allison Fredrickson. You can go ahead on this one, Camilo, if you'd like. Cool. The commissioners have any questions regarding these artists? Does anyone I, from the public? Anyone? Okay, go ahead. I just wanted to say, Camilo, that I think this is really exciting for East Boston. Just the dynamism of these murals, I think, will um, be really welcome in East Boston, and the students will get to enjoy some really amazing artwork there. So I'm excited for this. Absolutely. The complexity and the color is amazing. Any other commissioners have questions or comments? 
Does anyone from the public have any comments, questions? Well, can we bring it up for a motion from one of our commissioners, please? I'll make a motion to move forward with the artist selection at the Curtis Guild Elementary School. Thank you, Nigel. Can anyone second that? Milo, I think that was James. It was. Man, look oh, at Oh, sorry, me. James. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Sorry about that. Uh, any commissioners can second that? I'll second. I'll second, I'll second it. it. Oh. I'll well, take it. Thank you, Cara. Cara got in there first. Cara Thank got you. it. Thank you. He's Thank good. you, Kara. Well, I'll bring it up for a vote. Uh, John? Yes. I am a yes as well. Kara? Yes. Diana? Yes. Brian? Brian? Yes. Oh, yes. Nigel? Yes. And James? Yeah, I wasn't sure when to say yes, but yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. And congrats to the artists on moving forward. And congrats to the city of, well, the Curtis Guild Elementary School, too, for getting about to get some great work. Liza, I, I, I give it back to you. Thank you. Super exciting. We're moving along, guys. Um, our next site presentation for, uh, for review and public testimony is a long-term interior mural at the Mario Umana Academy, also located in East Boston. This interior mural is located in the school's multi-purpose and community room. This is a room that hosts a variety of the school's events and community gatherings. Um, I believe with us today is artist Tennyson, the art teacher, who may, be, who may want to um, jump in for public comment later. Mari Umana Academy is interested in artwork that celebrates bilingualism and dual immersion, emphasizing the school's commitment to inclusivity and respect for diverse languages, including nonverbal communication. They want to reflect the joy of learning in a multi-generational, multi-ethnic com community um, in a way that's connected to East Boston's unique cultural tapestry while embodying the school's core values of bilingualism, respect, inclusivity, and joy. Together with the school's art teacher, Moac rec recommends local artist Felipe Ortiz these are three examples of his past work. Felipe is a Latino artist and a resident of East Boston who is deeply invested in integrating the vibrant cultural elements of his background with the rich tapestry of the East Boston community. His proposal for the mural includes interactive engagement with the students at the Omana and is not just an artistic endeavor but a continuation of his commitment to celebrating Latin American arts and artists in this neighborhood. The artist finalists for Mario Umana Academy included Felipe Ortiz, Ruth Henry, and Alex Jarasev. Thanks so much, Liza. I now open it up to any commissioner comments or questions. Yeah, question, is that a gymnasium where the mural will be uh, located? So it's a gymnasium-like, but it is not a gymnasium. Um, our gym is in a separate building. It's our family room. It's where we hold any large events. It's our music show. Um, in three weeks, we're having a family paint night. It's where family paint night is. Um, so yeah, it's our heart of our school. Thank you, thank you. A and place of prominence, Michael. if you will. Yeah. Brian, did you have a comment? Just real quick, just realizing I'm going to recuse, my, recuse myself from the vote for this one. Okay, great. Thanks for letting me know. I now open it up to any members of the public that would like to make a comment or ask a question.
Hearing none, I'm curious if any commissioner would like to make a motion for artist selection for Mario Umana Academy. I'll make a motion to move forward with the artist selection for Mario Umana Academy. Thanks, Camilo. Do I have a second? Yeah, this is James. Yes, I <laughs> second that. <laughs> yes, James. Commissioners, when I state your name, please say yes if you agree with the motion. Camilo? Yes. Kara? Yes. Nigel? Yes. James? Yes. Diana? <laughs> yes. And I'm a yes as well. So congratulations to Maria Ana Umana Academy. The motion passes. I'll now pass it back to Liza. Thank you, John. Um, just pointing out that we are halfway through our artist selection for this evening. So um, with our halfway mark, we are um, up for review and public testimony for a long-term interior mosaic mural at the Phineas Bates Elementary School in Rosendale. The interior mural mosaic will be located at the school's entrance vestibules. Um, with us today is uh, the Phineas Bates art teacher, Andrea Drakes. Phineas Bates Elementary wants a mural that is welcoming and warm, creating an inviting atmosphere and embodying full inclusion, reflecting the diversity of its community. With this unique space, the MOAC team saw a great opportunity here to expand the city's 2D mural collection um, with potentially exploring mosaic as the media. Together with the school's leadership staff and art teacher MOAC recommends artist M Mia Schoen from Waltham, Massachusetts. These are three examples of her past mosaic work. Mia's proposal is inspired by the Bates vision, be safe always, accept others, try your best, excellent work, and show respect and kindness. She plans to guide students to create their own tiles in a tile making workshop that connects the Bates vision to who they are. These tiles will be incorporated into the final piece. The artist finalists for Phineas Bates Elementary included all local artists, Mia Schoen, Bren Bataclan, and Eleanor Vale. So thank you, Liza. Um, uh, any commissioners have any questions? I actually have a quick question. Um, I'm, a, I'm, well, I don't want to assume, but I'm thinking the mural will wrap around those uh, columns on the top uh, photo there. Correct. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we plan. We intend to take up that entire space. Okay. But probably going to keep that smoke-free school sign there, or she'll probably integrate it. They'll probably integrate it into the design, if you will. Definitely. Any commissioners have any questions? It's fun to Is see some from... mosaics there. Oh, so yeah. excited for that element. Agreed, Brian. It's an ancient medium. Do any uh, anyone from the public have any questions, quips, concerns? Well, somebody has to mute, sounds like it over there. Um, if anyone from any of the commissioners can place a motion, please. I can make a motion to accept the artist's recommendations for the Phineas Bates Elementary School. Thank you, Brian. Uh, any commissioner can second that, please? I'll second. Thank you, John. I will now place it up for a vote from the commissioners. Uh, John Andrus? Yes. I am a yes as well. Cara Elliott Ortega? Yes. Diana Fernandez Vivo? Yes. Brian Hone? Yes. 
Nigel Jacob. Yes. And last but not least, James Mason. Uh-huh. Yes. Thank you all, commissioners. And congrats to the city of Boston and Phineas Bates. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, piece coming up there. Liza, back to you. Thank you, Camilo. Our next site presentation for review and public testimony is for two long-term murals at the Lee Academy Pilot School in Dorchester. This school site has two exterior mural projects at the school's main entrance. With us today are Alexandra, Alexander Cherry, the principal of the school, Mark Abelson, science specialist, and um, their paraprofessional, Melissa Henderson. For this call, we allowed interested artists to propose for both walls located at this site in an effort to visually connect the themes and the aesthetic of each side with a cohesive concept. At the left side, Lee Academy will undergo renovations, building an exploratory play area for its youngest students from KO to kinder with a new mural as its backdrop. Next slide, please. And at the right side, Lee Academy will undergo renovations for an outdoor nature area that its older students, grades one to three, uh, will enjoy. Lee Academy is interested in artwork that resonates with early childhood students, such as playful de depictions of nature, gardening, and the school mascot, the honeybee, and evolves into artwork that reflects the growing maturity of students with elements that represent the African diaspora and Latinx communities. Together with the school, MOAC recommends artist David Sepulveda from Orlando, Florida. These are three examples of his past work. Lee Academy's artist selection group included school leadership, staff, and parents. David proposes vibrant murals for Lee Academy, blending his Afro-Caribbean heritage with the school's ethos to inspire unity and pride amongst students while fostering inclusivity and a sense of belonging through culture culturally reflective and nature-based designs. The artist finalists for Lee Academy Pilot School included David Sepulveda, Joshua Weiner, Sharif Mohammed, and Jeremy Sobek Harrison. Thanks so much, Liza. I now open it up to any commissioners for a question or comment. I just want to comment that I'm so excited about the integration of the murals with the landscape elements. Um, as a landscape architect, it's so wonderful to see that being married together in this. Um, and I really would encourage, you know, as we think about future murals, um, really thinking about, you know, what are the spaces we're creating around them that enable people to enjoy them? And our students in this example really get that priority of experiences with the nature garden and then um, this, this sort of play garden right next to it. So, so excited uh, to see this uh, intersection. That's a great point, Diana. Any other commissioner comments? This, uh, we're considering uh, just this side on the left, right? Not both sides? Both. He, he will be doing both sides. Correct. Okay. I had a question. I'm wondering if we could go back a few slides to the where we see a larger picture of the facade of the building. Yeah. I'm wondering maybe Liza, a question for you, if there's been consideration about the kind of like actual mural surface. I'm just thinking about the, you know, the kind of like nice mo or uh, that nice cornice moment up at the top of the building and then those kind of arches. Um, are we really thinking of like that entire surface as opportunity for the mural or maybe identifying specific areas within, you know, the surface. So like those kind of like interior, that interior arch panel or just kind of wanting to maybe think about that a little bit. I almost kind of like the decorative architectural elements as they are and think there could be cool opportunities for that integration without overtaking the entire surface, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense and is certainly something that we could, um, you know, leave up for consideration and conversations between the artists um, and the school community. 
I now open it up to any members of the public who may want to make a comment or ask a question. Well, hearing none, I'm curious if a commissioner would like to make a motion for artist selection for the Lee Academy Pilot School. I would Anyone? like to I would like to make a motion to move the artist selection for it with the Lee Academy Pilot School. Thanks so much, James. Do I hear a second? I'll second that. Great. Thanks, Camilo. Commissioners, when I say your name, please say yes if you agree. Camilo? Yes. Cara? Yes. Brian? Yes. Nigel? Yes. James? Yes. Diana? Yes. And I'm a yes too, so the motion passes. Congratulations. I'll pass it back to you, Liza. Thanks, John. So our next site presentation is for review and public testimony uh, for a long-term mural at the Rafael Hernandez K-8 Dual Language School in, Re in Roxbury. This site is an exterior facade at the school's front entrance and near the staff parking. With us today are Danielle Costello, the director, I'm not sure, but possibly Megan Wolf, director of the Friends of the Hernandez, and a group of their very excited fifth grade students who I'm sure would love to um, give public testimony when it's their turn. At the Rafael Hernandez School, uh, culture and representation of the school's bilingual community is very important as the students are predominantly Latinx, Dominican, and Puerto Rican. They are interested in artwork that embraces the school's core values, Bria, bilingualism, respect, inclusividad, and amor, and is bright, colorful, and inviting while expressing joy, love, community, and celebration. Together with the school, MOAC recommends local artist Sylvia Lopez Chavez. These are three examples of her past work. To collect input, the Hernandez sent a survey out to staff and families and a neighborhood association electronically. Their family council and adult education program shared these slides and invited votes. Finally, their after school program presented the options to students and collected votes. Sylvia states that she is a Dominican American immigrant whose first, whose first language is Spanish. She proposes to collaborate with this school to create a mural focused on celebrating bilingualism through language, color, and joy with input from students and faculty. The artist finalists for Lee Academy Pilot School included artist Sylvia Lopez Chavez, David Zayas, Melissa Pandina, and Joseph Wardwell. Thank you, Liza. Uh, this is this is going to be a good one. Uh, do any commissioners have any questions or concerns? I'd like to say I'm very excited uh, at this one. This is going to be a, it's a beautiful wall and a really really good artists. Uh, any commissioners? Would the public uh, like to comment? We have the Rafael, Rafael Hernandez Dual Language School online here. Do you all have any questions or concerns? There you go. Buenas tardes. Hola, mi Hola. nombre es Andrés. Hola. Um, gracias por elegir la comunidad de la Rafael Hernandez. Um, Estamos muy agradecidos que ustedes lo escogieron a nosotros para hacer este mural. Y yo creo que la escuela entera va a querer ver esta pintura en la Rafael Hernández. Hi, my name is Joshua Guerrero. Thank you for, for choosing the Rafael Hernández community. We're very, we appreciate that, um, that you're going to paint a mural, a mural in front of the school. Um, hello, my name, my name is Isaac Mejia. 
Thank you for giving us the gift of when we're older, we can walk on the street and say that we had a part in this mural. Hola, me llamo Isa Mejia. Gracias por darnos este regalo de cuando seamos más grandes, podemos pasar por esta calle y podemos decir que, este mur que nosotros tuvimos parte en este mural. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Gracias, gracias. Um, I see Richard Heath has his hand up. You have a question, Richard? Um, yes, yeah, thank you. My name is Richard Heath. I live in Jamaica Plain, and I'm just overjoyed that we're going to get a Sylvia Chavez mural where I live. I love this woman. I love this woman's art. 99 <laughs> Crane just blows me away. Seawalls in East Boston, she's unbelievably great. I can't believe that I'm going to see a real live Sylvia Chavez, and I can't wait to meet her because I'm going to be around there. I live down. <laughs> I'm going to be around there. I'm, I'll buy her. I'll buy her empanadas all day long. I'm <laughs> thrilled. We're going to get a Sylvia Chavez where I live. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Richard. I think we. I think there's many, many fans in the neighborhood. She might need some coffee every now and then besides the empanadas. <laughs> um, any other, uh, anybody for, else from the public like to comment? Well, if not, um, can we, can I get a commissioner to make a motion, please? Sure, Camilo, I move. The, to make a motion for the artist selection for the Rafael Hernandez K-8 dual language school, Sylvia Chavez. Thank, thank you, John. Anyone second that? I'll second that. Thank you, Diana. I will now uh, ask for uh, votes from the commissioners. Uh, John? Yes. I am an enthusiastic yes as well. Uh, Cara? Sí, gracias a los estudiantes. <laughs> Diana? Yes, and thank you so much to the students. So wonderful to hear from all of you on the selection process. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Brian? Yes, as well. Nigel? Yes. And James? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And congrats to Rafael Hernandez Dual Language School for getting their own Peace by Silvia. It's going to be great. I can't wait to see this one. I'm I'm a fan as well. Thank you. Thank you, Liza, for presenting. And you're up next again. <laughs> Lots of high fives going on over there in the classroom. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Camilo. Um, on to our next presentation. Uh, our next presentation for review and public testimony is a long-term mural at the Hugh O'Donnell Elementary School, also in East Boston. This site is an exterior wall located in the school's playground. With us today is Mike Rubino, the O'Donnell's acting principal and director of operations and data. The O'Donnell is currently undergoing a playground renovation and seeking new artwork to replace existing murals. They are interested in artwork that embodies themes of strength and resilience, drawing from the rich stories of the local Eagle Hill Latino community. Uh, who are primarily from South and Central America. Together with the school, MOAC recommends local artist Sophie Tuttle. These are four examples of her past work. To collect input, the O'Donnell tallied approximately 150 votes from mostly students and families. Sophie's concept for this project involves speaking with students, teachers, and parents in both English and Spanish as a fluent Spanish speaker um, about people, plants, and animals that remind them of their home country or the place where their families are from. It would also include words of strength and resilience in Spanish. The artist finalists for the Hugh O'Donnell Elementary School included artist Sophie Tuttle, 
Sayak Mitra, and Jesus Alvarado. Thanks, Liza. Before I turn it over to commissioners, I was curious if um, Mike Rubino, if you wanted to say anything about this selection process. Sure, yeah. Um, it's, I mean, echoing so much what um, everyone has said, this has been like such a joy, like just such an incredible process to be a part of. I think in combination with the fact that we are finally getting a playground um, after many years without a playground at all, it was damaged and kind of taken out and our kids are amazing and they'll play anywhere with anyone but um to kind of know you know hopefully less than a year from now the entire campus outside you know <clears throat> it's bps we love our old buildings and you know it's the joy we have inside but the outside is going to represent i don't know just <clears throat> joy families the community our kids all walk to school um so they live across the street they live down the block um, you know, so it's great to, you know, parents on the call and the Umana, we're just having so much love brought into, you know, East Boston and around the city. But, you know, Liza, you've been an incredible person to work with. Um, our kids, our families, we're just, we're really excited. Thanks so much, Mike. Appreciate that. I now it open to commissioners for any questions or comments. Hearing none, do any members of the public, would they like to make a question or a comment? I would like to just jump back in and acknowledge um, Claudia Pulgarian, um, the family liaison of uh, the O'Donnell who is also with us today. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for your help and work, Claudia. I ask once more, any public questions or comments? Well, I'm curious if any commissioner would like to make a motion for artist selection approval for the Hugh O'Donnell Elementary School. I'll make a motion to select this artist for the Hugh O'Donnell Elementary uh, mural new playground. Thanks, Camilo. Do I hear a second? Second. Oh, I'm sorry, Brian, you go ahead. Thanks, Brian. Commissioners, I'll call your name. If you agree with the motion, please say yes. Camilo? Yes. Cara? Yes. Brian? Yes. Nigel? Yes. James? Yes. Diana? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. The motion passes. Congratulations to Hugh O'Donnell on both a new playground and a new mural. Liza, I'll pass it back to you. Thanks, John. And last but not at all in the least, our next site presentation for review and public testimony is a long-term mural at the Joyce Kilmer K-8 Lower School in West Roxbury. Next slide, please. The site is an exterior facade facing the school playground of the Joyce Kilmer K-8 school. With us today are Ariane O'Connor, the visual arts educator for K-3, and Joe Foley, the school's principal. The Kilmer is interested in artwork that includes celebrating inclusivity, diversity, and the school's core values, respect, responsibility, and empathy. They want artwork that is bright and affirming, embodying themes of love, growth, and transition, and reflecting their students and promoting a sense of belonging and unity within the community. Together with the school, MOAC recommends uh, artist D uh, Thomas Detour Evans from Denver, Colorado. These are three examples of his past work. Our selection process included artist reviews with the school leadership, the art teacher, and their family liaison. Thomas's proposal involves meeting with leadership, touring the school, meeting and formulating ideas with the teachers and students. He plans to have students partake in the mural creation and installation process, utilizing a material called polytab and effectively having students paint design at their own pace. This process will also allow for the students to safely take part 
in such a large mural. The artist finalists for the Joyce Kilmer K-8 Lower School included artists Thomas Detour Evans, Ms. Akar, and Allison Dunavent. Thank you, Liza. Thank you, Liza. Um, would anyone from the school like to make a couple of comments? Aria or who else was it? I'll jump on if that's okay. Hi, um, thank, thank you. you. So um, I'm Ari O'Connor, I'm the visual art teacher and thank you um, to everyone involved in this process. This has, um, Liza, you've been incredible to work with. Jake, um, Karen, thank you as well. And the entire commission for this opportunity. It's honoring, it's um, humbling and such an emotional reaction just watching this display this evening. So I appreciate all the efforts. This is gonna mean a lot to a lot of our members of our community, but most especially our students. Thank you. Thank you, Aria. I believe Joe Foley, the principal might be here too. Or do any commissioners have any questions? I know this is our last one, but I just want to say how exciting this program is and just thank Liza for all your work on this and partnership with BPS. It's just amazing the caliber of artwork um, that is, you know, going to be on display for our students. Um, and, and that's just so exciting. Absolutely. Liza, you've made this easy and highly enjoyable. I mean, the caliber of work has been super exciting. And I'm super glad I have a new computer. So the colors are just popping. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Liza. Thank you so much. Does anybody else, for, any other commissioners have any other questions, concerns? Does anyone from the public? Well, uh, any commissioner would like to make a motion, please? Camillo, this is James, and I would like to make a motion to move forward with the artist selection at the Joyce Kilmer K-8 Lower School. Thank you, James. Thank you, James. Any commissioner can second that? I'll second that. Thank you, John. Uh, well, I will bring this up for a vote now, John. Yes. I am most certainly a yes as well. Kara? Yes. Diana? Yes. Brian? Yes. Nigel? Yes. And James? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, all commissioners. And congrats to Joyce Kilmer, K-8, K-8 Lower School, and the artist, of course. Lots of work to be done. And thank you, Liza, again, for all this hard work. Thank you, Camilo. This concludes all of our artist recommendations and selections for opportunity one of our new mural initiative, A Canvas of Culture, in partnership with Boston Public Schools. We can't wait to see the artwork come to life this summer. Thank you to all of our BPS partners who attended the meeting today. Um, thank you to all the students and the staff who have been um, a pivotal part of this process up to this point. There is so much more work to do, um, but we're really excited to get to it into the next phases, which will include um, community engagement, design. You'll be seeing all of us again um, at a BAC <laughs> coming soon um, to go through final design and, and, and then, of course, a session. Um, but, you know, we're really looking forward to all of that. So thank you. Thanks so much, Liza. Before we adjourn, I just wanted to thank commissioners and members of the public for attending this special meeting so we could go through all of these really amazing projects. A huge congratulations first and foremost to all of the artists and projects that were approved and selected. Really excited to see these realized very soon here in Boston. And finally, a big thank you, of course, to Liza and Tony and Jake and everyone at BPS, as well as the staff at MOAC. And a very heartfelt 
thank you to all of the school stakeholders and participants who helped in this artist selection process. This is an integral part of what we do and we couldn't do it without you. So very grateful and thankful for your help and participation in this. And now the last order of business tonight is a motion to adjourn. Do Would any commissioner like to make a motion? I feel like James, you should do it. <laughs> Yeah, and as long as we know it's James, I make a motion to adjourn. Do I hear I'll a second? I'll second that, James. <laughs> Thanks, Camilo. If you agree to adjourn, Commissioner, when I say your name, please say yes. Camilo? Yes. Cara? Yes, and thanks again to everyone, um, including all the BPS staff and students who attended and have participated so far. Really excited. Brian? Yes. Nigel? Yes. James? Oh, yes. Diana? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. So we are adjourned. Thank you again, everyone, for attending this special meeting. Really exciting. Have a good night. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Do y'all know who's second in the adjournment? Anyone catch it? Camilo. Camilo? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was funny about it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Liza. Thank you. We Hi, got it done.